Hey guys, how you doing? I hope you had a fantastic week. Today I've got an interesting session for you. We're going to be doing a light malware static analysis on some phishing emails that we got. We usually receive a couple of phishing emails each and every week, but this one stood out and I thought, hey, let's explore what these guys are trying to do. This was a really interesting email. They tried to imitate our bank, uh, the bank lingo, everything. They even had a custom email from the bank. Uh, they even included attachments telling us, hey, these are a couple of swift transactions that you need to do. And those two attachments were the, this Malipo PDF and this exe file so what we're going to do is we're going to run some static analysis on these files and see what essentially they're trying to achieve with these two files so before we begin let me give you a brief description of the environment that i'm running i'm running flare vm on hyper v flare vm is a malware distribution suit you can think of it as the kali linux of malware analysis and what it allows you to do is to perform basic malware analysis tasks it's an easy suit to set up i'm not going to cover the step-by-step -step installation process for flare vm or for Hyper-V, but I'll leave links in the description detailing how you can do that. So for the first test, I'm going to run some static string utilities on the PDF and the EXE file. And what this will give us is some basic indicators on how the PDF and the EXE function, uh, the inner functions and the inner workings of both of these files. I'm going to begin with FLOSS. FLOSS is a string utilities on steroids. It's a really good utility. So I'll navigate to Flare VM Utilities, search for FLOSS and double click to run it. So let me run the FLOSS on the PDF and the EXE file. But remember to navigate to the directory where your files are and in my case they're already on the desktop so i'm just going to run them directly so to run string utility on the pdf i'm going to type floss then the name of the pdf and hit enter and that was quick as you can see it's, it basically spits out a couple of strings inside the file um, and from this we can get a couple of ideas on how the pdf functions and how it was made we can see that this is clearly an image that was converted to pdf uh, because I think this site embedded this link after it created the PDF. So we've, we already uh, have a couple of ideas on how this PDF was made and that's really useful if you're doing serious malware analysis. And this is usually one of the first steps that you're going to have to do. A lot of this is gibberish, uh, as it should be. Metadata tend to, tends to be quite gibberish, uh, but we're seeing a, a couple of other lines. So the rest is quite gibberish. Uh, we can't tell what it is, uh, but we've got a really good hint here that this was an image that was converted to PDF. Now, I don't know if these strings could be malware or they are obfuscated, but we're going to run an, a static analysis on the PDF, a static malware analysis on the PDF later. So for the next test, I'm going to run the static string utility on the exe file and get some basic indicators on the exe file, uh, we're going to spit out some strings and see the inner workings of the exe file. So I'm going to run floss on the exe file. So this is going to take some time. I'm going to skip forward. Yeah, and that's it. It's done. Uh, I've had to exit. Uh, there have been a couple of exceptions as it was running. So let's try and analyze and see what we have here. So basically from this, we can see that this is clearly a compiled program. We can see the platforms where it's supposed to run. We can also see some path variables, some registry file names, some programming commands uh, or programming classes and methods. From this, this is definitely telling us that this is a compiled program. Now we can't tell which programming language this is, but this is definitely C++. So with the previous two steps that we've done, we've had some basic understanding on how the PDF and the exe file function. By spitting out some basic string indicators, we have some rough idea on how the PDF and the exe file were made, uh, what tools made them. Now uh, I'd like to confirm if these tools were made by other programming languages. I'm going to try and decompile them uh, with other languages. I'm going to try and decompile both of these with the .NET uh, disassembler to try and see if they were created uh, using the .NET framework. For the next test, we're going to try and see what programming languages made these two files. This test is to basically rule out a couple of programming languages. In particular, I'm going to try and rule out C Sharp. Uh, I'm going to rule out the .NET framework as a possible tool for creating both the PDF file and the EXE file. For the PDF file, I know it's not. For the EXE, it could be, uh, but we're going to try and rule both of this out. I'm going to run ILSpy and see if there's some intermediate language hidden in both of these files. And if there is, that could definitely hint to .NET being used as the tool to create these two malicious files. To open ILSpy, I'm going to go to Flare VM and the .NET folder, we're going to run ILSpy. So what ILSpy allows you to check is, it allows you to see if there are .NET libraries that were used to create the particular malware that you're analyzing. And if there are, then that hints to that particular 
malware being created on the .NET framework. So let's start with the PDF. Uh, for the PDF, I know it's not, uh, but we're going to open it anyway. So we've loaded the PDF uh, and straight off the bat, we don't see any particular IL libraries in the PDF file. There are basically no .NET libraries here. So this rules out the PDF being created by the .NET framework. So let's run the exe file. So running the exe file, we see again, there are no IL libraries inside the exe file. And this now rules out C Sharp as a language and it rules out .NET framework as the language being used to create this malicious file. So we've confirmed that C Sharp is not the language that we that was used to other either of these two files and this is a crucial step because it allows you to understand the malware as you analyze it by ruling out a couple of languages uh, you essentially make your work easier in the last step we determined what languages were used to create these two files and what languages were not used we confirmed that c sharp and the dotnet framework were not used to create these two files we didn't see any dotnet framework libraries uh, running inside these two files and from our basic string indicators, we saw that this exe file was basically created in a Win32 environment. Uh, that could be C++. For us to truly determine that, we'd have to disassemble it and probably run some dynamic malware analysis on this. Now, I wouldn't do a dynamic malware analysis on this. What I'm going to do next is that I'm going to run a static malware analysis on the PDF file and on the exe file. What the static malware analysis will do is that it will do a couple of tests to determine if these two files are viruses. It's going to run them on popular virus engines and it's going to do also a couple of other tasks. It will try to do a good job to decompile these apps into their native source codes, uh, but it's not going to be 100%. I'm going to use the PE Studio Malware Analysis Toolkit. It's a static malware analysis studio that allows you to quickly determine if files are malwares or they're not. To open PE Studio, you go to Flare, Utilities, search for PE Studio, double click PE Studio to open. Okay, once you double click PE Studio, you get it up and running. What you have to do is you have to drag and drop the files uh, to do an initial malware assessment. So I'm going to start with the PDF file. Now, as I said, I don't think this is a virus, uh, but let's see. So it's running. It's doing a couple of checks. It has completed. Uh, as you can see, it ran the file on virus total and found out that the file is clean. Uh, the PDF file is definitely not malware. And now our basic string indicators showed us that. So we were right on that, uh, but it's also good to test to confirm and make sure that this is not a malware. To also spit out the strings that we saw earlier using the floss string utility. As you can see, we have a lot of strings here. Uh, and I think we also have the, yeah, we also have the metadata that was embedded when, when this image was converted to a PDF. So we've confirmed that the PDF is not a malware. To run the malware, we open PE Studio again under utilities folder. To run the assessment, we drag and drop the exe file. Now this is going to do the same as it did with the PDF file. It's going to run a couple of checks and see if this is a malware file. Uh, yeah, it's done. As we can see, it scanned the file on VirusTotal. VirusTotal is a really cool online malware scanner. It has scanned the file on 65 search engines and 34 of them found out that this is a malware. So we've confirmed that the exe file definitely is a malware and double clicking that would have resulted in a couple of bad things happening so let's let's investigate this file a bit more. So as you can see, uh, so let's look at the directories. So we're seeing six directories. Now looking at the debug timestamp, we're seeing that this file was created in March 15th, uh, 2018. Now that's really useful information because we can now go online and try and see if there are particular malwares that were created in on this date on particular exploit websites. Also, as we've confirmed, uh, this file is an executable. Yeah, and that's it. Uh, so basically we've determined that this file is a malware. Uh, 34 engines flag this as malware. We've seen that it's using some couple of uh, resources that were flagged as malicious, uh, the auto it library. Uh, running this file would have resulted in into some bad things happening. Now, what are those bad things happening? To determine what those things are, we're going to run this file in this environment. Now, you, need, you really need to be careful when you're running malicious files. One, you have to make sure that you're in a VM. Now, running this in a VM is essential because a VM uh, is encapsulated. It's hidden from your main device. Everything is virtualized. Uh, the network is virtualized. So not everything is going to leak. I'm not going to say it's going to be 100% leak proof, but some things are not going to leak out. So definitely also, so be really careful when you're running these malicious files. Now, in my case, I'm going to run this VM on this machine. I don't really care if particular things happen as this is a, this is a malware analysis VM. So even if even if everything was corrupted, it's okay. 
but yeah be really careful on how you run these malicious files now we're going to trick this malware into revealing its functionality to do that uh, we're going to run ficknet ng ficknet ng is a dynamic network emulation tool which tricks malwares into revealing their network functionality it does that by giving malicious files fake network services such as dns irc http etc so let's run ficknet ng to run ficknet ng we go to flare nets folder ficknet ng so to run ficknet ng we type ficknet that's going to open up ficknet ng okay we have ficknet ng up and running and we have process monitor on the right side so all we have to do is to execute the malicious files now as i said please be careful when executing these files uh, you really need to be careful in which environment you're running in there could also be some leakages so please be really careful so after executing the malicious file with administrator privileges we get some interesting results let's investigate and see what the malicious file is trying to do so what is this malicious file trying to do well for one it's so it's trying to open up a udp port then it's also trying to request for a tcp port now the udp port i believe is to push out the data that it's collecting investigating the process monitor we can see also a, a couple of interesting things for one it's trying to open some registries uh, but we're seeing denied access so it wasn't successful as this is a fake emulated network and this is expected over malicious files to ensure persistence they usually create registry keys so basically that's it uh, that's how you can do some light malware static analysis on malicious files that you suspect as i said earlier i'm not a malware analysis professional this is not my main gig but i do this once in a while and i thought i'd share the video with you and also kind of spread the word on the Flare VM malware suite of tools. I think it's a really cool suite of tools. So if you're into cyber security, uh, if you're into malware analysis, uh, definitely you should have Flare VM. But Flare VM is not the only malware analysis suite of tools out there. There are others. Uh, but if you haven't started and you want to dab into malware analysis, uh, you want to dab into some cyber sec stuff, then definitely check out Flare VM. As I said earlier, I didn't run any dynamic analysis on this malicious files. And a couple of the disassemblers that I'd recommend is uh, Jidra. Uh, Jidra is an NSA malware analysis toolkit. I, I, I did a video about this in my recent uh, video. I'll link that up there. Also, we have IDA. Uh, IDA is the heavyweight. So what the dynamic analysis is going to do is that it's going to allow you to see step by step how the program executes and the source code it executes. So if you want to reverse engineer the source code and see the methods how they work internally how everything works step by step uh, a dynamic analysis is really essential but i'm not going to cover this here i think i'll leave that up to you uh, maybe i might cover it one day in the future i've been running gidra and i think gidra is really cool so that's it for me uh, if you like this video please hit the like button if you didn't like it you know what to do like the video subscribe and hit the notification button to get notified of future videos till next time peace